Manchester City are the best team in the world. After winning the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League, there is no doubt about this. But their rise hasn't been the most clean and ethical. From secret sponsorships to obstructing justice, this is the controversial rise of Manchester City. Our story begins with a 736 word statement that was published on the Premier League website in February. In this document, it was stated that City have been referred to an independent commission after being charged with 115 alleged breaches of Premier League rules. Among the charges, City stand accused of failing to provide accurate financial information, in particular with respect to its revenue, which includes sponsorship revenue, failing to disclose managerial payments during the Italian coach Roberto Mancini's time at the club, and breaching Premier League rules on profit and sustainability between 2015 and 2018. They're also accused of breaching Premier League rules on profit and sustainability. While the Premier League also argues City did not comply with UEFA regulations around financial fair play in 2013-14 and between 2014-15 and 17-18. This whole saga was uncovered when City's emails and documents emerged from football leagues and found their way into the German newspaper Der Spiegel in 2018. The documents appear to show City bypassing financial rules within football by disguising state investment as sponsorship revenues. City, as expected, have always refused to comment on any of the German newspaper's revelations because they say the leaks were criminally obtained. In one email though, a leading City lawyer wrote that Khalidun Al Mubarak, club's chairman, had said that he would rather spend 30 million on the 50 best lawyers in the world to sue them for the next 10 years then agree to any financial settlement or penalty from UEFA. This saga has been going on for a long time. Just for context, when this all started, Mark Hughes was Manchester City's manager, a 16 year old Loris Karius just joined the academy and Gareth Barry was the first big summer signing. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but that might actually work in City's favour like it has in the past. UEFA too have had a bone to pick with City. Their investigation started immediately after those De Spiegel revelations as its FFP rules were and still are much tighter than the Premier League's. If City were artificially inflating their revenues and disguising costs, they were doing so primarily to circumvent UEFA's rulebook, not the Premier League's. So UEFA had to act quicker than the English League and announced a formal investigation into the possible FFP breaches in March 2019. 11 months later, the club financial control body ruled City had misstated their annual accounts between 2015 and 2016 to the tune of 200 million pounds. It also mentioned that the club had not cooperated with the investigation. The punishment for these offenses was a two year ban from European competition and a 30 million euro fine. Five years later, however, a three man cast panel cleared City of the most serious charge, overstating revenues by a majority verdict. But why though? Some of UEFA's charges are time barred. Since most of the charges fell outside the organization's five year statute of limitations, there was simply deemed as not established as far as the panel was concerned. City were however fined for 10 million euros for not cooperating with the investigation. City likely won't be let off the hook so easily with the Premier League though. There are no such time barring restrictions on the Premier League's investigation and the potential punishments which range from reprimands and fines to points deductions and even expulsion from the Premier League. The investigation will probably last years rather than months which leaves the Premier League and City in a bit of a limbo. But if a points deduction is imposed, would that mean that City would have some of their titles revoked? I would expect that if there is a points deduction, it would be applied going forward, says James Hill, a legal director specializing in sports regulatory matters at Onside Law. Generally, panels don't like deciding titles in a court process. It is weird though how all of this seems to have been swept under the rug. Those playing within football, even for City's rivals, never bring up the topic. A source in Adam Crofton's athletic article about the topic says, for the players, it is whatever. They respect City's football talent and are disinterested in the wider schematic. In short, nobody in the rival dressing room is pointing out how City earned £1.7 billion in commercial income in the past 10 years, while Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal averaged £1.1 billion each. Either way, now that the season's over, it looks like City will be playing the waiting game. But if the past is anything to go by, they shouldn't have too many sleepless nights. That is the state of football at the moment. To say bye bye, yo. Bye bye, yo. Have to say bye bye, yo.